Hello, welcome back. I hope you're doing very well. In this uh, short video, we're going to take a look at using submixes on the force um, as a mixing tool, because I believe the proper use of them is the most surefire or easiest way of making your tracks sound better. Um, if you if your workflow is to record into the arranger and then bounce those individual tracks out for mixing in a door, this is less important because you can do all this stuff in the door and the tools, to be honest, are probably better in there. But if you're doing all your mixing in the force, whether that's because you're playing live or because you're making videos or you just don't want to use a door, um, submixes and the tools that you can use um, for shaping your sound um, are really powerful. Um, so we're going to look at how to do that now. The first thing we need to look at is what are submixes, what are they for and how do you set them up? So um, we're just going to have a quick look here. Now by default, uh, the force um, routes all of the audio from your individual tracks, however many you've got. The audio comes straight out of each of those individual tracks and is routed straight to the master channel which then goes to the outputs. And all of that audio is summed um, or grouped together um, and goes straight out. However, a submix allows us to put what is essentially just another track and we can send um, audio from one, some or all of our tracks, however we decide to do it, um, from those tracks into this submix where it is summed and then the output of that as a whole goes to the master output and sent to the, out, to the main outputs. Now, there are a couple of benefits to this, the, the primary one being that um, the submix um, has insert effects just like the tracks do, and that allows us to apply parallel processing to anything that's in this group of tracks, um, which is very, very useful for uh, a number of reasons. The first being, uh, each of our individual tracks only has four insert slots. Now, if you're using performance effects, things like the stutter effect or, or the granulator, you might have some delay on there. You've suddenly run out of uh, insert effects very quickly, and that makes it quite difficult to do mixing type adjustments to the sound on each of these tracks. So if we route them to a submix, that gives us another opportunity to do corrective EQing and so forth. But also certain tracks, certain um, groups of instruments being uh, processed together, particularly things like drums, really benefit from uh, pro from uh, parallel processing or bus processing as it's sometimes called. Um, so what we're going to do is have a quick look at a project, an old project I've got. We'll use it as an example um, and I'll show you how to set the submixes up first of all and then what to do with them once you've done it. So uh, let's get on with that bit. Okay, here's a uh, project that we're going to use as uh, a demonstration. Uh, I'll just play one of the scenes for you so you can see roughly what it sounds like. So we've got two drum tracks, uh, we've got two sub uh, or two bass tracks, bass and sub, we've got some synths, we've got some vocals, all that jazz. So to create uh, our sub mixes, it's very simple. If we go to the mixer tab, we can see each of our individual tracks here and in the output field, each of them by default goes to output one and two, which is the master outs. To change that and to create a submix, all we need to do is double tap on that field and scroll up and we can see all of these submixes that we've got here. And what we need to do is assign all of the tracks that we want to be in the same group to the same submix. So you would put all of your drums, for example, to perhaps submix one, your bass to submix two, your synth to submix three, so on and so forth. And you do that simply just by clicking. So as an example here, if we change these two to submix one, now these two tracks uh, are both grouped together in our first submix. Off screen, I'm just going to um, set those up for this project and then I'll come back and we'll talk about why I've grouped them together and what we do next. Okay, I'm back. I've uh, created four submixes here and I've done that by grouping together uh, instruments or tracks that kind of occupy the same part of the frequency spectrum so that we can um, look at those uh, groups and apply processing to them. Um, I'm not going to give a 
in-depth mixing tutorial here because uh, I'm not qualified to do it, basically. I'm just an amateur. Um, if you want to learn about that, I really recommend Dan Worrell's um, uh, beginner tutorials on YouTube, which I will link to in the description. Um, but basically, I've got four sub uh, mixes here, one for bass, all of the low end, so that's got sub and kind of higher register bass in it, drums and percussion, um, vocals, and all of my synths grouped together as well. So I'm just going to show you the effects chain I normally use and how I use it. Um, there are no doubt infinite possibilities and infinite kind of combinations of effects that you can use in very specific situations. As a general rule of thumb, um, having a parametric EQ, a compressor, and some distortion um, on each of those tracks. You don't have to use them all, or you can use them very sparingly, but that is a, quite a, a safe standard set of processing tools for each of these groups. So let's just have a listen to what this sounds like with no processing, first of all. Okay. Um, and what we'll do is we'll just apply a couple of things and then we'll do an A-B test at the end in which you can all comment on these saying you can't hear any difference and you'll probably be right. Um, so the first thing I normally do, in fact I always do, is to find the fundamental frequency of my kick drum. Um, and the reason I want to do that is so that I can apply a slight EQ cut on the bass group, which helps the kick drum kind of cut through a little bit. Um, it's very easy to do that. For some reason you can't use um, solo on the submix page. I don't know why, but you can still mute. So we're going to listen to these drums. Now the way we find that kick drum fundamental is to go into our paraphonic EQ, parametric EQ and switch it on. Now we know our um, kick drum is going to be sitting somewhere in the low mid frequency band. So the way we find it is to turn the gain up of that um, of that band a little bit, and then we're going to sweep through um, the frequency with the uh, EQ knob until we find that uh, fundamental, and it should be pretty obvious when we hear it. So let's try that now. And I forgot to put my glasses on, so I can't see what that reads. Give me one second. Sorry, bit of human error. Sounds to me that it's kind of there somewhere. 73 hertz. So let's turn that off for the moment. We're now going to go to our uh, bass group and go to the EQ there, switch it on. And we're going to play that and then we're going to make our little cut at 70 and see if we can hear the kick drum coming through a bit better. So wind that down to 70. Then make our cut. Now to me I can hear the kick drum sound a bit better there, let's just A-B it. Yeah, definitely coming through a bit better. Sounds to me like we might have lost a little bit too much of our bass. So what we're going to do is just narrow that cut slightly. This uh, Q uh, value is the bandwidth of the of the EQ change you're making. So um, the bigger the value there, the wider that cut will be. So if we just dial that back a little bit, we should allow our kick drum to cut through um, without taking too much of the bass out. Okay, not going to spend too much time on that. So obviously you need to be listening through your monitors and doing it a bit more surgically than I've done. But that's uh, a brilliant way of using the uh, the two groups, the, uh, the drum group and the bass group together to make a change that will make your whole mix sound better because the kick drum cuts through without using uh, ducking or mother ducker or any compression. It's just a, a nice clean EQ change you can make. So if we go back, um, <clears throat> the next change I would make generally to the uh, bass group would be to apply some compression. Turn it on. Just for sake of 
simplicity, we're going to use the uh, presets here. More attack. And let's dry the mix down with dry wet mix. Okay, sounds all right. So let's mute that and then just listen to the drums on their own. Now to me, it sounds like we need to reset the low mids before we do anything else. Now to me, it just sounds like the drum, sorry, the high end is a little bit fizzy. So we're on a, a shelf here. I'm just gonna dial the highs back a little bit just to take some of that kind of top end off. Sounds better to me. Then we might boost the high mids a little bit, which is where the snare drum is sitting, to make the snare drum cut through a little bit more. And then we're obviously going to want some compression. Go down to drums. Subtle. Yeah, that's better. Now let's just unmute that from our base. Now what's happened here is because we've made some changes, our balance has gone wrong. So we need to just bring our drums back a little bit in volume. Go back to effects. Okay, let's meet those two. And uh, now let's listen to our synths. Now again, to me, that synth sounds a bit fizzy. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the top end off on our, that sounds better already to me. It's a slightly fizzy character to that. And what I want to do, just as an example, is squash these all together with some compression. So we're gonna turn the compression on we're going to go to instrument and flatten. Now what that does is it uh, it evens out the differences between the lowest and the highest volume points and makes it more cohesive. And that, that sounds much better to me. Again, we need to just bring our synth volume down a bit after that change. And it sounds like our vocals are too quiet. Uh, so let's go to effects, let's solo those out. And on our um, vocals, let's put a compressor on that. Vocal. So peak grabber, what that's doing is basically allowing you to turn the volume of the uh, of the vocals up, but without um, the peaks becoming too loud. So you can see it's applying a little bit of reduction here, but not very much. So if we dial the threshold down, we'll start seeing some more gain reduction here, which means we can turn the overall volume of the vocals up a little bit. Allow them to be bigger in the mix without uh, the peaks becoming too loud. So if we just listen to that for a minute, the bass obviously needs to come up. That sounds pretty good to me. This is obviously just an example. I've just spent way longer on this. Um, I'm really trying to demonstrate the principle rather than the practice. So I hope you'll forgive the fact that I don't know what I'm doing on the mixing side of things. Um, but what I'm going to do now is um, I will grab the bit of audio I took of the, um, of the, of the track before we applied this parallel processing to it. Um, and then I'll put it side by side with some, 
something that shows what we've just done and we can decide whether it sounds better or not um, if it sounds worse or if it sounds exactly the same the fault is entirely mine it's because i've just very quickly done this mixing it's not because the uh, the process is a bad process this is a really great way if you spend some time on it of, of really shaping um, a sound or, or shaping a mix so that each of the bands the uh, frequency bands sit nicely together um, also if you're playing live and you're using an interface which allows you to send out lots of different uh, outputs quite often you might find that an engineer will want the bass or you sort of your bass and your kick drum separately because they'll go to mono subs or something like that so again you would want to be able to shape those instruments or process those instruments together to send out as a sub mix to the to the to the desk anyway um i hope that was useful um uh there will be more of these coming along and as i say uh please forgive the shoddy mixing skills it was the uh, the process or the practice i wanted to demonstrate not necessarily my skills which are fairly lacking anyway thanks very much for watching the ab uh clip will come up now cheers bye bye mm -hmm.